So this is the retro flag G Pi case. Mm -hmm. um, it literally is a mocked up version of a Game Boy, um, but it does have a color screen. Unlike the original Game Boy, you'll notice it has four buttons on the front, not just A and B, but you have X and Y. What you what it's probably harder to see too is see these little dots on the back. Those are triggers. Oh. Huh. So nice. you have like like Super Nintendo, right? Like yeah. you had the A, B, X, Y, and the triggers. So these are your triggers. Um, and it runs um, RetroPie. Um, and the cool thing about RetroPie is you're probably, I don't know if you can tell, this would be a fun trivia game. It, it will scan your ROMs and look for what you're playing. So there's Super Mario Brothers 3. Mm -hmm. There's Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt. And... Oddly enough, I'm a huge fan of um, the TurboGrafx-16. <gasps> so, like, I have Splatterhouse loaded up and all the Bonks games. Um, oh. So I'm going to be... So it uses the Raspberry Pi Zero. Mm -hmm. And I got the, the Zero W, so it, it supports wireless. Um, I can map to this and just upload the ROMs right to it. Um, and then let me see. Here. Is it the, the RetroPie actually fits in the cartridge slot, doesn't it? Yes. The, the, so the, the Pi, I don't want to pull it out because if I pull it out, it will actually like shut the whole thing down. Yeah. Um, but yes, the, the, the Pi zero like fits in the upper part of the cartridge, mm -hmm. but you can pull the cartridge out um, and it just runs on double A's, doesn't it? It can run on double A's. I have it plugged in with the um, power. It, it's a pin to USB. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a pin to USB, but it will run on three double A batteries. Hmm. Um, while I was setting it up, I will say, and I'd be interested in if anyone else has one. I don't know if you can see Mario. Yeah, we see another. Yeah, we can make it out. You can make it out. Yeah. Um, the three AA batteries lasted me like an hour and a half. Oof. Now I don't know if that's why, because like I was trying to mess around with things and copy files. Like it, that wasn't three hours of like playing Zelda. That was for Nintendo. That was like. Or an hour and a half. That was an hour and a half of me shaking my fist trying to get the darn thing to work. <laughs> um, because you have no keyboard and you have no mouse and you have... Once you get the thing assembled, you're stuck with just trying to get it to work. Mm -hmm. um, there's no on-screen keyboard. Um, I was having a problem getting Wi-Fi configured. So there's some... You have to take the micro SD card out, put it in a computer, copy some files to it, hope they're right. Um, fire it up, find out you failed, <laughs> shut it back down. It's the Linux. So you still had the <laughs> Linux experience. Got it. Yeah. It was a typical. And the kicker was, is I, I forgot what I did like eight months ago on another raspberry Pi to get it to connect. Um, sooner or later I did figure it out. I was missing a curly bracket on the end of a configuration string but um which was also enough to shake my fist at so this is um, so setting this up is not for the weak of heart if you're if the idea so, of taking so a raspberry pi and setting it up might be a little bit more than some may want to deal with right so here is my point of view and i'm thinking about actually starting back and i'm actually thinking about starting back over and writing a beginner's guide to getting the darn thing working because I read a bunch of posts and it's definitely for someone that's at least, I would say intermediate technical. Mm -hmm. And at the very end of their thing, it was like, but if you wouldn't have configured the video card and you wouldn't have configured this, you could have set everything up on, cause there's, cause inside the device, there's an HDMI port. Mm -hmm. I just can't get to it. Inside of the device, there's two USB ports. I just can't get to them. Because that's like, the, yeah, that's not the point of the device. Yeah. So, but if I would have taken and configured everything, 
and done like step three last, I could have then just snapped it together and put it in the device mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and been and been well on my way. But um, no, so it's it's I would re I would just say read a bunch of articles and and plan an hour or so, depending on how your home Wi-Fi set up too. I so I have not just keys, but I have um, a hidden SSID, which I know isn't super powerful against hackers, but it's mm. just one more layer uh, in the so you, in the in the suit of protection. So you you can you can go check out information on that. We'll have the link in the show notes, but that's over at retroflag.com. And unfortunately it is sold out on Amazon and I think that's the only official retailer that they have for it. So um Well I got that in time then. Yeah it looks like you did. Looks like you slipped right under there. Um and and they don't and again this this place has pretty cool things um they have uh you know you can get a, an nes case for your retro pie uh so you can make your own basically uh nintendo mini uh there's a genesis case for it super nintendo famicom and they have the usb controllers uh to to like the authentic style uh, uh usb controllers for genesis and super nintendo um so so like there's a lot of options out there maybe some of these are more available than that one i don't know i'm checking out the nes one also currently unavailable uh and this is kind of a boutique shop that i think it's doing this so they might not have a lot of a lot of stock but uh man that is how, how much is that running for retail and that the, i see that the pack comes with the raspberry pi yeah it does come with raspberry pi it wasn't um hold it was something on. like 80 bucks wasn't it yeah, it was like 80 bucks. It's it wasn't, not, I mean, it wasn't not, ridiculously yeah. expensive to me for what, it's cheaper than the original Game Boy, I think. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I think it was $99 in uh, $1989 for the Game Boy, and all that had was Tetris and no color. <laughs> 